have something in NPM. NPM sort of like have had um, other collaborators or developers right, come together to put together some things like. Um, well, the point of a function, right? We have something we call dry. Sorry. Right, do not repeat yourself. So the point of program most time is to not repeat to repeat yourself. Right. So um, you can write a function and then you have it to do a particular task and then you can reuse the particular function over and over again, assuming you are how do you call it um, doing the same particular function or particular procedure where like maybe logging you probably will have a function that performs logging functionality, log out have functions that will perform. So um, the point of probably packages, or let's say um, these smaller, smaller projects that people have done is to some sort of like functionalize their, how do you call it, um, their modules, whatever it is, you try and understand it that way. Is to functionalize the modules, right? Um, so, um, yeah, we have various packages that we can use to do a lot of things, right? We can have one that we use to do validation, right? That does um, most of your validation for you. We have, let's say, um, you can say NPM. We have the group of developers who have come together to develop a package that you can use to validate, let's say, um, your forms. All right. So there is no point in you having to like go through the hash reverse re uh, coding of, let's say, as you mean on any, on any project. All right. You have to validate your forms. Right. Good. You don't have to go through that rigorous procedure of having to do all of the validation for you. What you do is you pull the validator package from wherever it is that they have their, how do you call it? Um, you call it package, right? Modules, right? And then you use it in your code based on what you want to do. Right. So a lot of some of the things that they will do is to show you how to use it in terms of documentation. All right. So you will have to understand one. One of the most important things that a developer you skill you have to have is how to read documentation. All right. You will get to a point in your programming career where, well, what you are looking for is not a tutorial on YouTube anymore. Or nobody have had probably such challenge, or even if they've had, well, probably not a lot of people have had that kind of challenge for them to like um, make a tutorial on. All right. So then, what you only have have to rely on is whoever have written that package, right? They would might as well have atti attached things like documentation to it on how to use it, right? So it's for that reason why when you are having your GitHub profile, right? See, you have a create readme add file. Yeah. Um, where is it, where is it, where is it? Well, unless you open it from your side. Nice. Right. But when you come to my repository, let's check something like.
Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. a readme file. Let's demonstrate one. So, okay. You know what I'm going to be doing with that is? Jeroku okay. gives you Five slot to use your hard drive. To host applications, right? Yeah. So when you exceed that limit, then you have to then hard drive and upgrade probably your subscription from this free package to let's say um, a paid package. Right now, you probably have a based on package that you will have. Right. So this is in a way of finding out how you delete an app on your hero right? Yeah. Okay. So let us assume that um, we have uh, an application, right? let's say, um, um, let's create more and put this here. Say, new Test right. Are you following? Yes. Alright, so we put it with the code. Let's have a index with HTML. I'm going to 
and potentially do some of these things just so you will become a, aware of some of the CSS properties that we have. So when I do them, just take note of that. Okay. The reason why I ignored this mistake was that he has a small h, right? I corrected it with this one. Let's say first web will be what? Capital. As you know, this is all we have. And we would want to um, push it to get. What do we do? Check out the status. This is all we have. It's add or it's commit dash n. This is all we can do for now. But as you mean that um, we um, sort of want to have it in our repository first, because the first stage of committing it to production is to push it to what? Speak up. Yes, Alright. So that means we have to come and create a new repository on Git. Alright. Let's see if I have the repository for test. Okay. So let's create a new repository. Let's say. There's an option that we add a readme file. Not yet, wait. So we create the repository anyway. So after creating it, it gives us a remote address. Right? So we copy it from here. Right. Then we come in here, then we paste it here. We have a code. Where is it? Nothing comes. What? Where is it? Uh -huh. What is our code? So in this situation, what you can do is that I want to introduce something called get pull. Right? We can create a new file from here, which is readme, right? Then we say, um, add, let's take out this one. So add readme file, right? So we go down. Check this particular file with the one in our local um, storage, right, which is at computer. So we don't have a readme file here, yes. but we have one here. Yes. So then, how do you then reconcile the two? That means that this repository is ahead of the one on our local disk by the readme file. Yes. Again, right. what you can do here is do. Repositories are on the same 
on the same level. Like you have the same information on your, how do you call it, remote repository, the same as the one on your, uh, how do you call it, uh, your, no, GitHub, right, okay. So now what is left is for us to create our Heroku URL, right? So we can do Heroku, create, and let's say, we want to have our own URL, so we can say Heroku, Usually I start with KF, which is my initial. Okay. Okay. So to create your URL for you, um, that is this one. So then what we can do next is to create a PHP file. So index PHP and PHP So if we open uh which one is the URL this one, right? Yeah. If we open this one, we have our application here. Alright. So now our problem is do you have the live link for us to be able to link our projects live from GitHub to work right? So we know that our uh, URL is which one? This one, all right. Good, so you copy this, then you come here. Usually, what I do is that I have already done my research to see what kind of, we call it syntax. We have a syntax we call readme syntax, but that's not the point of this lecture. The point of this lecture is to have a URL on how to link it to Heroku, right? Yeah. So uh, usually I'll come here, edit, right? Then I'll copy this one. Right. Copy this. Come in here. Then in my readme file, I paste it. Yeah. Right. So this is the syntax for writing and. Um, MD files. There's a whole lecture on how to write MD files, but well, you don't need to know everything as it work. So after your research, you realize that this is how it is done. So mostly you copy this and keep it in your notes. When you need it, then you need to use it. Right? So we have, it's like you have a, an open bucket. So let me see if I copied everything before. Have a um, hero cool link, which is this one, right? We copy it, we bring it here, then we take out that, then we paste it here, then we save. So it means that this repository is ahead of the main one, right? So what we do now is to push it to our GitHub to get our. Our 
Alright. So now that that is done, we come back to our report which we have to GitHub. Thank mm -hmm. you. 